Over the past 11 months, the Bank of Canada has taken out its club and given an absolute beating to the Canadian economy, but just like Rocky in the last fight of a movie, the Canadian economy just keeps on getting back up, no matter how hard it's been hit. But listen, we're starting to see some new cracks that weren't there before that shows that the Bank of Canada strategy could be working and we could be feeling the impacts of this sooner than we expected in the form of higher unemployment. This of course should have a major impact on the largest element of Canada's economy, real estate, but based on some unprecedented actions taken by some of Canada's biggest banks and biggest mortgage holders, while it seems like a safety net for mortgages is being placed under the entire market, propping up values for the time being. But before we can talk about that, we need to talk about what cracks we're starting to see and why this time Rocky might not be getting back up. This is the first thing, time we've seen this in a long time in Canada is zero quarterly GDP growth. That 0%, right? Now, when, when you see a gross domestic product, which also can be an indicator of quality of life in a country and stall like this, typically... You're thinking that's pretty bad, right? We don't want to, we want the economy to grow because the economy sort of thrives on this sort of um, Ponzi scheme of pon constantly needing growth, constant growth to increase the quality of life for Canadians and to increase the amount of money that individual Canadians make. 0% growth is a bad thing in that context, in that framing. Now, let's shift our framing from being just average Canadians and shift it to if you're the Bank of Canada, what are you trying to see? What do you wanna see if you're the Bank of Canada when it comes to GDP? Right now, they're trying to uh, bring down demand for goods. They're trying to decrease business growth. They're trying to do all of these things to reduce inflation specifically, right? to reduce inflation specifically. The Bank of Canada is more worried about inflation becoming entrenched and lasting for the long term than they are worried about GDP stalling, business growth stalling, unemployment going up. These are all sort of side effects of raising interest rates. To the Bank of Canada, this is 0%. Let me, let me zoom it in there for you. That 0% is something that they're incredibly happy about right? Because it validates their recent indication that they're planning on pausing interest rates. It says the economy is slowing. What we're doing, raising interest rates is having an impact. We can see it in the GDP numbers. We, we can see that we've only had 0% growth in the fourth quarter, probably the quarter where our interest rates uh, in, in the, the second quarter are actually starting to show up in the data. They can say, we're making the right decision here because we can pause we can, we can continue to pause and, and potentially, now they'll never say this, potentially pivot and lower interest rates in the future. But for now, they're going to wait and see and make sure that both that inflation comes down, right? That's the end goal, keeping inflation extremely low or, or, extreme, or getting it to decrease back to their, their acceptable band between 1% and 3%. So they're seeing this GDP number and they're saying, hell yeah, hell yeah, we're doing our jobs, right? We're doing the right thing. This is what we wanted to have happen. This is exactly what they want to see, even if it's not what, the, what individual Canadians want to see. So we're seeing a stall in economic growth or a, a stall in the growth of Canada's GDP, something that's positive in the eyes of the Bank of Canada. But remember, the only reason they want to see this is to make sure that they can bring down inflation numbers. They want to see inflation go down. GDP stalling is a good sign that in the future inflation is going to go down, right? Uh, or that, that that's the trend that is going in because if we have less growth, less demand for goods and services, of course, um, supply and demand, less demand, same supply means prices go down in theory, right? And that's what we're starting to see here. The, the total CPI ticking down to 5.9. That's the data for January, 2023. Remember, we, there's a little lag, right? We don't get the February's data until mid-March. Um, we don't get January's data until mid-February. That's why we have January's data, 5.9%. What that means is that the Bank of Canada is liking what they're seeing, right? Inflation's starting to come down. Our GDP is, is sort of stalled here. The Canadian economy is stalled. You'll see these, these news articles saying, oh, no, the Canadian, the, the Canadian economy, we're not growing anymore. But this is the best case scenario for the, the, the body that is, trying, that is trying to make Canada's economy more stable by hitting that inflation point. Of course, all of this caused 
largely the inflation problem caused by quantitative easing and the decisions of the Bank of Canada at the beginning of the pandemic. But uh, you're going to you'd get me ranting on that if I went into too much depth on it. So things are trending in the right direction for the Bank of Canada. GDP is flatlining. Inflation seems to be trending down. But there is one more element of strength that the Bank of Canada is worried about. Especially as we've seen really strong employment growth over the last couple of months, including uh, data that we have on employment to January, which was phenomenally strong. So the fact that uh, total economic activity uh, is still flattish despite that strength in employment, I think will be, uh, you know, I guess uh, a successful monetary policy news story for Mark. Yeah, so that, that's that's what we've seen, right? It, that The element we didn't touch on, which is employment numbers, right? The Bank of Canada has also sort of seen that the the um, the employment numbers haven't ticked down, unemployment hasn't ticked up, and wage growth hasn't ticked down either, sitting around between 4 and 5% right now on an annual basis in terms of wage growth. These are other elements that go into the Bank of Canada's decision-making about what they do with interest rates. If we saw a, a dramatic decrease in uh, in employment, right? Something you'd expect when you see interest rates going up. The Bank of Canada might be even more happy about pausing, right? Right now, we haven't seen that dramatic uptick in unemployment. So the Bank of Canada is kind of worried, saying, okay, if people still aren't unemployed, that means businesses aren't firing, businesses aren't contracting, maybe we're going to see more inflation down the road, but the GDP will be a weight off their back that we've sort of seen stall growth there. Um, some evidence towards saying they've done the right thing in pausing. So with all of this information, why aren't we seeing larger decreases in the real estate market? Mortgages are incredibly unaffordable at today's rates given today's prices. And in fact, homes are less affordable now than they were when they were at their peak in terms of price. So, so what gives? And uh, admittedly, we have seen a cool down in real estate sales volume right? We haven't seen the cool down in terms of pricing um, to the extent that we would expect given the amount of interest rate uh, increases or the, the, the severity of the interest rate increase that we've seen, right? Uh, typically, you'd expect prices to come down more than they have, um, but we just have we haven't seen any volume. We haven't seen as many sales, as many transactions happening. Now that has a couple of different impacts. The first one being, um, well, uh, if you if you don't sell properties as much, you don't have as accurate comparables to price the next property at, and and people who are purchasing houses also don't have as as accurate comps because you, there's not as much volume in the market. Your neighbor down the street didn't sell recently because volumes are down, so you don't really know what your home is worth. And people who are trying to purchase in a neighborhood don't really have an accurate sense of that home's value because there's no value or there's no there's no volume to create the amount of comps that you're wanting to see. So we, we've seen a cool down in terms of volume, but not necessarily price um, because we're not seeing people panic sell. But the question is, why aren't we seeing people starting to panic sell? There's certainly a lot of people who either have variable rate mortgages that have shot up or have needed a mortgage renewal for fixed rate mortgages over the past six months. So, so what's going on here? Well, the answer seems to be, at least in part, that the big banks in Canada don't want to see a correction like this and are actually giving stressed out homeowners a short term solution to their big problems. So this is the remaining amortizations for CIBC residential mortgages. Um, a quick refresher for folks who aren't familiar, amortizations are essentially how long your loan is stretched over, right? Um, the, the shorter the amortization, the higher the monthly payment, the longer the amortization, the lower the monthly payment. Like if you have a $500,000 mortgage and it's had, all of that's to be paid over 10 years, well, that's a short amortization and the payments are going to be higher to pay off that $500,000 than if it's a five hundred thousand dollar mortgage on a 25 year amortization obviously with 25 years your monthly payments can be a lot lower because that's the amount of time you have to pay down the loan that's what the amortization means the typical mortgage in Canada over the past number of years has been uh, around 20 to 25 years, right? And we saw 45% of mortgages in Q1 2022 being 20 to 25 years, with 27% of mortgages being the kind of weird one between 25 and 30 years, right? Um, obviously, extending out the mortgage amortization brings down those monthly payments rather significantly. When we talk about 30 and to 35 years amortization and 35 years or or more, well, that's simply unheard of. Look at this. Simply unheard of in Q1 2022. CIBC didn't have any of these types of mortgages on their books. It was all inside, or, or the vast majority of it was inside uh, the 20 to 30 year range. 
Now flip over to a dramatically different story that we're seeing now in Q1 2023. Uh, just one year between 2022 and 2023, and the entire mortgage landscape for um, CIBC's residential mortgage book has changed. It's not just 25 to 30 years that people are able to extend out into. Now we're seeing 30 to 35 years at 3%, and then a whopping, whopping, whopping increase at 35 years and more. So that could be a 35 or, or 40 more likely or where the most of those mortgages are. So why would a big bank change their entire mortgage book? Well, I believe that it's out of a fear that people will not be able to pay their mortgages if they have a standard amortization. With higher interest rates, certainly for um, variable rate mortgages, but also non-variable rate mortgages for people who are having to renew, you know, with interest rates where they are compared to where they were when they purchased their house, people just aren't able to make these payments anymore. Um, so CIBC is left with a, a problem, right? They're saying, okay, people can't make their mortgage payments anymore because of the higher interest rates. Well, we could uh, go under power of sale uh, and sort of foreclose on them to, to use some uh, sort of not exactly accurate terminology, but you get the idea. We'd go repossess the house and then sell it. But right now, the bank of uh, the, these banks, the CIBC, they're underwater on the mortgages too. If they repossess this house, well, they likely aren't making all their money back selling into this market um, that is uh, sort of uh, dampened by these higher interest rates. So that's not, not a great idea. It costs a lot. It's a lot of work. You got to put someone on the file um, to actually uh, go prepare this house and sell it uh, under power of sale. Um, but that, that story changes when we look at option number two. They say, okay, what can we do to make it so that this person can continue to make their monthly mortgage payments? Uh, well, we don't want to foreclose on them, so we want them to keep on uh, making these payments. So let's do something called an amortization extension. And that's what I believe is happening here, right? We have people not able to pay, make their payments um, on around 20 to 25 years and 25 to 30 year amortizations. But if we can spread this out and allow people to pay off the, the value of their mortgage over a longer period of time, which is exactly what extending an amortization is, um, and they do that here to 30 to 35 years and 35 years and more, well, then all of a sudden people can make the payments again. Even if they're just barely paying the interest on their property, barely paying down any equity or, or, or building up any equity by by paying down the loan, even if that's the case, this is still favorable for the big banks, right? Because they don't have to put someone on the file and get them and foreclose on the property and then, and then sell it under power of sale. Instead, they can just say, hey, you just keep paying us. You're paying mostly interest anyways, so we'll just let you extend your amortization. We've been tracking how worried or not worried people are about paying for the rent or paying for the mortgage in the next uh, 30 days. And what's interesting is the trend. So. Back in 2020, we had a benchmark. You know, we asked people how they felt about paying the rent or the mortgage in the next 30 days. About 16% were worried or somewhat worried. About 82 or eight out of every 10 were somewhat not worried or not worried at all. But check out the number now. So in, in the most recent survey that we just completed and released for 2023, that 16% of people that were worried or somewhat worried is now 24%. So it's up a full eight percentage points uh, over the last couple of years and about three out of every four are not worried. At least on the mortgage side, with what we now know about CIBC and the way that they're extending their mortgages for people, likely for people that are in distress, for people that aren't able to renew, uh, then, then maybe people don't need to be worried about paying paying their mortgage because you can simply get a mortgage extension, extend your amortization out and reduce your payments. Even if you're not paying down your house as quickly, it at least solves the short-term problem, right? If someone's hemorrhaging money to a, an expensive variable rate mortgage at a 25-year a amortization, then they're going to say, I don't care if I'm losing equity. I don't care if I'm not building up equity in my property as quickly. They're going to say, uh, yeah, I'm going to take the mortgage, ex uh, the amortization extension because that can solve my cash flow problems. Cash flow problems are for today. Equity problems are for tomorrow. Even if I'm not gaining as much from the increase of value in my home over time, or, or what that's what people th thought over the past 20 years is that it's only going to increase. Well, they might be entering a changing era of that right now. Um, but they're saying, I don't care if I don't get the benefit of the appreciation of my property as greatly because I don't have as much equity in the property. Don't care as long as my cash flow problems, my problems of today, as long as I can reduce my mortgage and pay for my food, 
then, then that's gonna be okay. And you can see why people would start to agree to this sort of thing. So it's going to be incredibly interesting watching what the Bank of Canada is going to do next. Uh, more and more evidence is pointing towards them thinking that they've actually been able to thread the needle here, but other people aren't so sure. And we'll find out today at 2 p.m. Eastern because the Bank of Canada is going to be giving their big speech where they announce their decision in terms of which way they want rates to go or if they're pausing still, and they're gonna give us a bunch more information. If you're watching this video recently after it's been posted, it's likely that I'm live right now covering that video or covering that live stream. So check out the link in the description where you can find the live stream and join me there. And if you haven't already done so and want more Canadian focused updates just like this one, make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to know when I'm going live and covering live breaking news events, you can hit that notification bell as well and it'll notify you when I am live so you can join me there in person. But with all that said, thanks so much for watching everybody. Really hope this video helped you out at least a little bit and I'll see you next time.